Sometimes history turns by the efforts of one great figure, and sometimes it turns on the back of one stupid mistake. These are the idiot mistakes that change the course of history. The French Revolution encompassed an exceptionally bloody decade in France at the end of the 1700s. How violent was it? So many aristocrats lost their heads on guillotines that people eventually got bored of seeing it. Two elites who saw their fortunes reversed by the revolution were King Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette, who met their ends in 1793, after which the France they knew and ruled over changed forever. In October 1789, Louis and Marie were captured by revolutionaries and escorted to Tuileries Palace. But though they were technically held captive there, they weren't literally locked up. The royal couple could have walked out the door at any moment, and it took them forever to take advantage of that privilege. When they finally did sneak out, they didn't plan their escape especially well. Instead of splitting up and laying low, they traveled together in a large, conspicuous wagon laden with things like a complete dinner service and wine chest. They wore poor disguises and couldn't keep themselves from socializing. This is a painting of my wife, Marie Antoinette, my woman, my angel, my goddess, my everything. Not surprisingly, the royals were easily recognized, captured, and escorted back. Following some other ups and downs, a king was sent to the guillotine about a year later. Erwin Rommel was a Nazi and one of Germany's most prolific commanders under the rule of Adolf Hitler. He's been described as a brilliant general, but he made at least one giant mistake. Rommel was supposed to be in Normandy for D-Day, but he wasn't, and the reason why is somewhat embarrassing. Prior to the D-Day invasion, Rommel decided that he could use some R&R. &R. After looking at the tide tables and the approaching storms, he decided the Allies probably weren't going to attempt a channel crossing in such unfavorable conditions. Instead of staying on what would quickly become the front lines of the war, he headed home to Germany for his wife's birthday on June 6th, first stopping in Paris to buy her some new shoes. He was reportedly relaxing at his country house in Germany when he heard about the invasion happening hours away. Whoops, hope oh, that party was worth it. The fall of the Berlin Wall was one of the most defining moments of the 80s, and it only happened because of two easily avoidable mistakes. Tensions between East and West Germany were at a breaking point by the end of the decade, and in November 1989, politicians in East Berlin decided they needed to make some concessions if they wanted to keep the peace. They took to the airways to announce a slight relaxation of travel rules, intending to retain the right to deny anyone passage at any time. But the press conference announcing this was completely botched, with the announcement being garbled and unintelligible except for a few key phrases, including possible for every citizen and right away immediately. The New York Times says people interpreted the statement as an announcement of free travel. The second mistake was even more insane. When thousands of people converged on the border crossings they thought were now open, Stasi officer Harold Yeager called for backup once, twice, then 30 times in a single night. When his superiors didn't believe him about the chaos he was facing and at one point called him simply a coward, Jaeger said screw it, kicked open the doors, let people through, and started the fall of the Berlin Wall. All because his superiors made the stupid mistake of underestimating the situation. In 1977, New York City lost all power for 25 hours, with devastating consequences. Because it happened during rush hour, a staggering 800,000 people were stranded in the subways and elevators. Meanwhile, people above ground set to looting and pillaging on a medieval scale. There were about a thousand fires set, more than 1,500 businesses were looted, and by the time the lights came back on, there were damages totaling up to about a billion dollars. And it all happened because someone didn't know what buttons to push. Schneider Electric looked at what happened on that hot summer night in 77, and it started with a few lightning strikes. That's not uncommon, and most substations are prepared for it. This one, run by utility company Con Edison, wasn't. Con Ed's performance is, at the very least, gross negligence, and at the worst, far more serious. After a lightning trip to breakers, Con Ed workers tried to restart the station's generators. The problem? No one was there. When employees got there and started running system-wide procedures to get everything back up and running, they ran the wrong procedures. Instead of dumping the necessary 1,500 megawatts of load, they ran one that got rid of only a few hundred. The station shut down and the Big Apple went dark. In 1986, the Challenger disaster played out live on TV to a gigantic audience, with the vessel exploding in midair 73 seconds after liftoff. It was a horrifying moment that reshaped how the American public thought about the space program. The disaster happened for what was ultimately a simple reason. A series of O-ring seals were never tested in the cold, and ice turned out to severely compromise their functionality. An O-ring is a rubbery material 
that prevents either gases or liquids from leaking, much like you put a washer in your faucet. The morning of the launch, January 28, 1986, was freezing cold, which led to the failure of the seals and an explosive gas leak, which ultimately ripped the shuttle apart. It wasn't until 2016 that NASA engineer Bob Ebeling came forward to be identified as one of the few people who saw the disaster coming. I was the only one that called it in. No, it's going to blow. Though Ebeling and four other engineers argued that the rubber seals would fail, their concerns were overruled by both their managers and NASA. Ebeling later reflected on the tragedy to NPR, saying, Had they listened to me, it might have been a completely different outcome. The mistake destroyed the Challenger and cost the lives of everyone on board. In 1989, the Exxon Valdez dumped 42 million liters of crude oil into Prince William Sound, devastating the coastline for hundreds of miles. The ecological and economic effects of the disaster were massive and are still being felt to this day. The majority of the aquatic species in the area, including orcas and the Pacific herring, have never recovered and likely never will. That's a huge deal, as the Pacific herring is a cornerstone species that numerous other animals rely on for food. So why did it happen? Because the crew made some extraordinarily dumb mistakes. Captain Joseph Hazelwood was deep in an alcohol-induced slumber at the time of the crash, leaving the ship in the hands of a third mate with no radar. Uh, and the number one new Exxon slogan, hey, you try drinking three or four six-packs and then steering a huge oil tanker. In 1770, James Cook claimed Australia for Britain, which didn't work out all that well for the people who were already living there. He wasn't the first European to set foot on the continent, though, and if it wasn't for a stupid lack of foresight, Australia might have been a Dutch colony. According to the National Museum of Australia, Dutch explorer William Janssen was actually the first European to make recorded official contact with Australia. He landed there in 1606 on a ship that was part of the Dutch East India Company. He was dispatched on a mission to explore a largely unknown southern landmass to see if the Dutch might be able to harvest any gold or resources there. There weren't, but there were some understandably hostile natives that made him think twice about the Bolton Depot. Despite the lack of riches on the island, not everyone thought it was a worthless piece of land. Some argued for using Australia as a stepping stone sort of colony along the Europe-Asia trade routes, and others said it was pretty much perfect for winemaking. Dutch East India Company officials weren't convinced, decided it wasn't worth the bother, and left the continent up for grabs. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more messed up history videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.